Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Continuing on in doing a series of videos about setting up an HF, basic HF station, one of the things I wanted to cover was the switching supply and why I don't recommend them. Um, it's been my experience that they can make a lot of noise. Uh, recently I was at uh, a local hams uh, station. He's just setting up HF for the first time. Had this power supply and asked me what was going on with the station because he wasn't hearing much of anything. Well, I turned everything on and tuned 20 meters and there was so much noise you couldn't hear anything and the noise was being generated by the switching supply that he was using. I don't know that one switching supply is any better than the other and I've blacked out the name on this one. doesn't matter whose it is. I've had issues with all of them that I've tried. So just to show you quickly what I'm talking about, uh, I've set up my trusty Yesu transceiver with the handle on it so I could carry it back here. Um, one of the switching supplies that I have. By the way, I started to do this video and I use a switching supply to run the Sony uh, camera, uh, Sony A6000. And so I turned this thing on and there was this huge noise all over. And I, was it coming from the LED lights that I used to, to light up the space? and I turned them off and some of the noise went away but it was still there and when I switched off the power supply that ran the camera at the time the noise went away and it was like 20 over 9 and the camera is I don't know 8-10 feet away so switching supplies even small ones that uh, power cameras can generate huge amounts of noise and I suspect because that power supply has about a 10 foot cord on it that's a great antenna so before the battery goes <laughs> dead that I shoved in the camera to make it work. I'm going to turn on the power supply and tune around 160. It appears to me that as you go up in frequency that the noise becomes uh, less obvious and when you get to 15 meters I think it's pretty much gone. So I take the worst case scenario which is 160 meters and um, let's see if I can turn up the volume here. And Those tones that you hear are an adjustment, uh, the result of an adjustment on the front of the power supply, which allows you to move the oscillations up and down the band. But the problem you run into is that they're everywhere. And they tend to, tend to move frequency on their own, so they're not real stable. And they're they're annoying and they're plenty strong. Some of those are 20 over 9. I have just a short antenna connected to the uh, Yesu transceiver by short. It's maybe a foot long. So this is like a worst case scenario. I've got the power supply right next to the transceiver and, and obviously that makes it worse than if the antenna were uh, 20 feet away. In the case of Cal setup, his antenna was uh, a dipole um, maybe 15-20 feet above uh, above the roof of the garage that we were in. So, do you really want to put up with that every seven or eight kilohertz? And the answer for me is no. So, if you're going on a de-expedition, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Igor UA9CDC, uses this power supply on his de-expeditions. And the reason for that, it's light. It, uh, the thing can provide, I think it's better than 30 amps. And he's pretty good about keeping the antenna away from uh, the, the, uh, the power supply. So if you're going to use a switching supply, the power supply needs to be moved away from the antenna as far as you can get it. Uh, the better option is just don't buy one. Um, you just get a standard power supply with a transformer and it's something that's got some weight to it and uh, you won't be fighting all the noise. So again, um, these things make a lot of noise. You can There's an adjustment knob I'm turning on the front and it it's, as I measured it on, on 160, it's about every 7 kilohertz and it's about a kilohertz wide and as soon as you pick a frequency it tends to move on its own to somewhere else. Oh, that's my power supply. <laughs> and uh, One I'm not going to use to power a transceiver. It can power other things, but uh, but not that. Anyway, well I'm tired of hearing that. 
Um, the next video I'm going to do is about call signs and why I have the call that I have. I've gotten a lot of emails about it, so I'll try to answer that as best I can. But for now, this is Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Thanks for joining me. If you have a comment, and you might on this one, uh, post it below. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you did subscribe. 73. See you the next time.